Hello, welcome to part two of our look at linked lists. In the last topic, we went through some direct manipulation of linked list nodes to kind of get our heads around this data structure that's made up of this chain of references, kind of one node, each node pointing to the next. Uh, but to make this a useful kind of general purpose data structure, we're going to need some encapsulation, right? We want to use these nodes as part of a larger um, structure that can provide a bunch of useful operations the same way the array list did. So I want to start out by enumerating some of the operations which we'll want our list to provide. So like the array list, we're going to want to be able to add an element at a specific index in our, in our list. And I'm going to be using the Java generic uh, uh, syntax uh, with putting the type as uh, type E to allow our list to be parameterized to hold uh, different kinds of data. But we'll want to be able to add at a specific index. We'll want to be able to set Want to be set, be able to set the value at a particular index on our list, get the value at a particular index, but we're also going to have some more specialized operations, particularly for manipulating the first and last elements of our list. So we're going to have A method that adds an element to the start of the list as well as one. So add first to add uh, to the start of the list, add last to add to the end of the list, and we'll also have remove first and remove last to be able to uh, remove at the start uh, and the beginning. And we'll also have get first and get last. So we'll have kind of add, set, get, uh, as well as the ability to remove at a particular index. And then we'll have versions of these uh, uh, other than the set that specifically are for the first and last elements of the list. Now, of course, these methods that take a particular index could be, we could use the index of the first or the last element in the list. But there is a good reason to provide these other ones, which is our linked list structure is going to be efficient at manipulating the beginning and the end of the list. And so these are the sort of operations which we will want to do most with our linked list. Like a linked list is well suited to these operations in particular. And because they're going to be so commonly used, it's worth providing a specific method for this operation. All right, so the notes for this topic contain kind of contain a lot of examples of the code to, to implement uh, these different methods. In this video, I'm going to focus on the conceptual level and be drawing pictures on the board here. And if you want to see the code that goes along with that, uh, consult the notes. All right, so I'm gonna erase these to make room. Let's start talking about uh, what is our link list going to consist of? So. Remember, we defined our linked list node that it's going to have some piece of data and some reference to the next node in the list. And then we're going to define our list as consisting of Two, uh, two pieces of data, a count, 
which is going to be the count's going to keep track of the number of elements in our list. And head is going to be a reference to the first node in our list. And so we're going to refer to the front of our list, the first node, as the head of our list. And we'll call that field head. And so that's the, that's the basic arrangement that we're going to start out with. What would this look like if we have a, have a particular list, let's say, we have the list 3, 7, 12, 14. So that's, that's the list that we have. And our count is 4. Our head points to The first of our nodes, which store 3, 7, 12, and 14. I'm going to trust that you'll remember that our nodes consist of a data and the next field. I'm not going to write data and next on each one of these just to, to make it a, a little cleaner. And so if we wanted to do an add first to our list, right, if we wanted to add a node at the beginning here. So our add first is going to consist of three steps. We need to we need to create a, the new node that we're adding in here. So I'll add a node with value 2. And when I create the node, uh, I'm going to create it with a next pointer initialized. So our list node is going to have a constructor that can take uh, an initial value for our next pointer. And I'm going to make that initial value the current head node of the list. So I create a new node where the next is going to be the current head of the list. The second step is going to be update head and then third update the count. So what do I mean by update head? Well, we're inserting this node at the beginning of our list, and so this should be the new head of our list after, after we're done. And so I'm actually going to reassign head to point to this node. And so after this, we can see that the chain of nodes goes head and then the four that were existing. So simply by switching a couple of arrows, a next pointer in our new node to the current head, and then moving head to our new node, we've now inserted a node at the front of the list. And we update our count to five. So one thing that I want to point out about this operation is that the number of steps involved was not affected by how many nodes were currently in the list. It is these three steps, and always these three steps, no matter how many nodes in our list. So this has nothing, the, the amount of work that add first takes has nothing to do with the amount of data we have, which is why we would describe this as a constant time operation, meaning that it's a fixed amount of work regardless of the amount of data. And this is the kind of efficient operation that we want, constant time operations. And this is a notable difference from our array list, where when we 
inserted at the beginning of the list. We had to shift all the elements in the array over to make room. That doesn't happen with our linked list because all we need to do is change a couple references and we're good to go. So what about remove first? Well, remove first also has a few uh, limited steps. One thing about remove first is that it's going to return the data from the remove node. So our first step is going to be to save the data that's currently at the head node. We're then going to update head and update count. So if we're performing this remove first on the list we have here, our first step is going to be to save the data from our head node in some temporary variable. This is what we're going to return at the end of the remove first because it needs to return the data that was at the head node. And uh, next is going to be to update the head. So let's think about what the head node should be were this to be removed. Right? If this is the first and this is the second node, after we remove the head, the new head should be the node that comes next. And so what we're actually going to do is to set head equal to the current head, current head's next node, right? So this, the head's going to point to the node one after the first one. And so we're going to reassign this I'm going to reassign the head to point to the same thing that the current head's next points to. So it's going to point here. And then we're going to update the count, which will bring it back down to four. And now we're done, other than returning temp here, returning the data that we saved. But in terms of manipulating the list, that's all it takes to remove the first node. And that's because if we go through the nodes of our list now, we follow the head to here, and then it's next, 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 this is null, we totally skip the node that was removed. So it is effectively no longer part of the list. Now you may wonder what happens to this node. It's in this image, it's still sitting here. And what Java will do is that Java actually, in the background, is always kind of monitoring all of these references, all the, the things that I've been drawing with arrows uh, in these diagrams. And when it finds something like this node that has no arrows pointing to it, right? there's no way to reach this node. You can't reach it from the head. None of these next pointers point to it. When Java finds an object like that, it will clean it up and get rid of it. And so all we need to do is to change our references to skip over it, and we've done all we need to do to remove it from the list. And so this is also a constant time operation, because the steps that we have to do don't depend on how much data we have, we just adjust the head uh, reference and the count, and we're good to go. And so our linked list here is very efficient at adding and removing, um, as well as uh, getting the first element of the list, uh, because we have this head uh, that's always pointing to it, and because it's this dynamic structure made up of this chain of references, kind of kicking out any particular node 
we just change the references to skip over it, and then it's effectively removed. So that's remove first. What would it look like to remove the last node here? So we have first talk about add last. What do we need to do? So the first step is going to be uh, we need to figure out which node is the last node in our list because what we want the case to be at the once we have completed add last is we want there to be a new node. We want to take the current last node, have its next point to our new node that we have added at the end. So this is the state that we want in the end. And so the first step to be able to change what this next pointer is, we're going to need to locate the last node in our list. So I guess, let me say that the first We're going to create a new node. And so I'll draw this in. We are creating our new node. We're adding two to the end. So we've created this, but we haven't yet changed anything about next pointers that will effectively add this to the list. And so The next step is going to be to find the last node so that we can have its next pointer point to our new node. And this last node is usually called the tail of the list. So we have the head of the list, first node, tail is the last node. And so what would finding the last node in the list actually take? Well, we saw an example in the first topic on linked lists of how to traverse the list of how to go through all the elements. And all we have is this head reference. And so the only way we can get to the end of the list is by following the chain of next references until we find a node whose next reference is null. Right? That indicates that we've reached the end. There is no node after that. And so we would want some a variable current that starts being the same as the head and then moves along through the list kind of each time being reset to the next pointer of the node that it currently refers to and then we'll finally end up with a reference to our tail and so this is going to involve traversing the list, going through all the nodes in order to find the last one. And once we find the last one, then we can uh, do the simple updating the next pointer. So setting the next pointer of current, which refers to our, our tail, to refer to our new node. And updating our count, once again, to five. Our move last is going to be somewhat similar. We're not going to create a new node, but we are going to need to find the second to last node. So this may uh, sound a bit unintuitive. Why, uh, why is there this asymmetry between if we want to add the last, we need to find the last node, 
want to remove the last, wouldn't we also want to find the last node so we can remove it? And the answer turns out that to remove a node, recall that what we need to do is to change, uh, to, to modify our chain of next pointers in some way to not include or to skip over the node that we're removing. And so when we ask which node's next pointer do we need to change in this picture in order to remove this node from the list, it's this arrow here, right? If we got rid of this arrow, there'd be no way to get to this node. And if this arrow became null, we would then treat this node as the last node in our list. And so the second to last node is the one whose next is the one whose next field must change in order to uh, uh, remove the last node from the list. So we need to find the second to last node. Save the data from the removed node like we did before. So we have our temporary variable uh, holding the data from the last node. That is what our remove last will return. And then do a similar list update to uh, what we've been seeing where we change the next pointer of our uh, second to last node to null and update our count. Subtract one, there are now fewer elements in the list. Uh, and then return the data from the removed node. So. How do we get the data if what we have is the second to last node? Well, the second to last node dot next dot data. So when we had the second to last node, we followed this next pointer, we access the data there and sort in a temporary variable, and then set this next pointer to null to effectively remove this node from the list. And like before, now this is an object with no reference to it anywhere and it will eventually be cleaned up by Java. So, what is the time efficiency of these manipulations of the end of the list? And the fact that we're traversing the list is a clue that these are not going to be constant time. That if we have to do an operation that involves accessing every element in our structure, that's going to be, uh, uh, that, that can't be constant time because it's going to take more work the more data that we have. And in particular, each of these traverse the list once, just kind of going through each node until we find the last or the second to last. And so each of these will take linear time because they have to do kind of a constant amount of work for each element in our in our list. And this is disappointing because I mean not only is uh, are these operations to add and remove from the end uh, of our linked list kind of somewhat more complicated than adding and removing from the beginning which had kind of one fewer steps they're a lot slower, they take linear time instead of constant time, and we'd really like to be able to have a structure uh, that could do both of these in constant time, uh, because there are a lot of cases where we want uh, a way to keep track of data uh, that where we efficiently can efficiently manipulate both the end uh, and the beginning of the structure. Uh, a really common example of this is any time we're representing uh, like a, um, a people lining up for something or some series of requests that we uh, process in the order that they come in, right? We're representing this sequence of, say, people in a line, and people get in 
at the end of the line and they leave at the beginning of the line and that's kind of the only places that uh, where the line changes and so we'd really like to have a structure where we can efficiently act, uh, efficiently manipulate both the beginning and end. So we're going to upgrade our link list to uh, make these more efficient and this upgrade is going to follow uh, a pattern uh, which is going to become very common as we as we talk about data structures which is we're going to trade off space for time we're going to modify our linked list to use a little bit more space and in exchange we're going to make operations more efficient in time specifically we're going to add a new field to our list it is the tail of the list. We're going to now keep track of both the head of the list and the tail of the list. So, what that looks like here is that our list now maintains a reference to both the head and the tail of our list. So how does this help with our remove add last or remove, and remove last? And so we still have to create a new node for add last. We don't have uh, uh, our finding the last node. We already have the tail. It takes no extra work to find the last node because we're always keeping track of which one that is. So our finding the last node is now constant. We just can go right there and change its next pointer to point to our new node. So this tail reference has upgraded our add last. It's both made it simpler. We no longer have to loop through all the nodes. We just can use our tail reference as the, the last node that we're manipulating. And it's also made it constant time because now it's the same number of steps no matter how many elements on our list because we can go directly to the last node. But is that true for remove last? We don't actually want to find the tail node in remove last. We need, if we want to remove this node with 14 here, we actually need to change the next pointer of the node before it. And given this node, like if we have this, there's no arrow from here to the node before it. It doesn't keep track of what its previous node was. And so the only way to get to the second to last node is still to start at the head and to go through all the nodes in our list until we get to the one that is before the tail. And so actually remove last has not been improved at all by this tail reference. And so let's double down and use even more space and see if we can get remove last to be constant time. Now the thing that remove last really wanted here is we can get to the tail. And I really just want to say, all right, tail node, can you please keep, uh, keep track of which node is the one right before you? And so to do this, I am going to add some more data to our list node and that our list node is now going to keep track of both the next and the previous node before it. So what our list looks like now is the head of our node, we had 3, 7, 12, 14. Now the head, its next points to here, previous here, next, oops.
previous there. Next and previous. The next node of the tail is still null. And the head node, it has no previous node. And so its previous will be null. And now to do remove last, finding the second to the last node is go to the tail node, go to its previous node. And it just takes those two steps, no matter how long our list is. And this means that finding our second to last node has now become constant time. We go to the tail, we go to its previous. And this finding the second to last was the slow part, was the linear time part of our remove last. And so having this previous reference has successfully given us a constant time remove last because now instead of traversing the list to get to the second to last, we do tail.previous gets us to the node right before the tail. So this is great. We have added a more space to our list. Now, and before we had the data on our list, plus a next pointer for each piece of data. Now we have a next and a previous pointer for each piece of data. But we can now, in constant time, add and remove from the start, add and remove from the end. And uh, this is going to be uh, far more efficient than uh, our, our array list uh, for particular cases where we're doing those operations uh, a lot. So, to introduce a bit of terminology, when we have nodes that are just data and next, we call it a oh, it's running out of ink. We call it a singly linked list because each node has a single link to its next node and wow just scrambled the letters on that one when we have our previous and next we call this a doubly linked list because each node has two links, has double the links of our, of our singly linked list to the previous and next node. All right, the last thing that I want to uh, go over is on the screen now, and it's this table of the time efficiency across the three structures we've talked about so far. So, uh, a bunch of different operations in the first column here, and then their performance in, uh, in, for our array list, for singly linked list, and for doubly linked list. So, a few things that I want to call your attention to. Uh, the first is these methods to get and set at a particular index. These are constant time for our array list because they're just indexing, their, their underlying representation is uh, an array where we can index to a particular element in constant time. And so uh, situations where we want to, uh, we're going to be accessing or modifying elements in the middle of our list frequently, an array list is going to be far more efficient because even with uh, our head and tail, our previous and next, our link lists have no way to get to elements in the middle other than uh, traversing uh, either from the head or the tail. And uh, this is going to take an amount of work proportional to the amount of data. 
as our list gets bigger, the, t the amount of work to access something in the middle gets bigger with our, uh, with our linked lists. And so those are going to be linear time or is, is going to be constant time. However, when we're talking about uh, m accessing or manipulating the uh, last or first elements, uh, the array list uh, does all right for uh, the last, although sometimes adding to the last will have this linear time uh, resize, which is never needed for our linked list. And we can see that our singly linked list uh, does constant time for the beginning, but we had this linear time need to find, need to traverse the list to find the tail uh, for these uh, operations that modify the end. But our doubly linked list can do all of our first and last operations in constant time. And so these are the sort of factors that we'll consider when deciding which data structure should we use to solve a given problem. We'll need to think about, all right, what are the operations that we're going to be asking of this data structure? What will we need to do most frequently? Will we be manipulating the beginning and end of the list, or will we be accessing elements kind of randomly throughout? And this is going to guide, all right, which is going to be the most efficient choice for representing that data. All right, with that, we finished with our topic on linked lists, and I look forward to seeing your questions.